the Federal Trade Commission Act of 1914. In 1914, along with enacting the Clayton Act, the U.S. Congress also enacted the Federal Trade Commission Act of 1914. This act created the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. It gave the FTC powers to enforce the Sherman Act of 1890 and the Clayton Act of 1914, and it gave the FTC additional powers to prohibit unfair competition and deceptive practices in commerce. So today, the FTC effectively has two divisions, one which deals with consumer protection against deceptive trade practices, and the other that deals with anti-competitive conduct. Somewhat confusingly, the Department of Justice Antitrust Division also deals with anti-competitive conduct. This overlapping administrative authority does create some confusion because the agencies do not always share views on what constitutes anti-competitive conduct. Unlike the Department of Justice, which can only act through actions in U.S. courts, the FTC has its own system of administrative adjudication. Section 5 of the FTC Act authorizes the FTC to challenge conduct via its own internal court-like processes. Until recently, the FTC understood its mandate to, it, to permit it to enforce federal antitrust law. But on November 10, 2022, the FTC issued a new policy statement expanding its own scope of Section 5 authority. According to the FTC, the FTC Act of 1914 now enables it to reach beyond the antitrust statutes. The FTC presently claims it can police the boundary between fair and unfair competition through enforcement and rulemaking. Now, scholars have questioned whether the FTC's ability to both make rules and enforce them violates the balance of powers established by the Constitution. In the case Axon Enterprises, regarding a merger of companies making body cameras for police, they challenged the FTC's administrative education structure after the FTC tried to block Axon's purchase of its competitor, VView. In 2023, the Supreme Court decided unanimously that the FTC's system of internal decisions via its administrative law judges is suspect and is subject to constitutional challenge in federal courts. The decision, Axon Enterprises versus Federal Trade Commission, decided on April 14, 2023, is seen as seriously questioning whether the FTC can maintain its internal court-like process. Now, the FTC understands its broad rulemaking authority based on the so-called Chevron Doctrine. In 1984, the case of Chevron USA versus Natural Resource Defense Council at 467 U.S. 837, the Supreme Court established a two-part test for when federal courts must defer to a government agency like the FTC, and the test is highly deferential. Under the Chevron Doctrine, federal agencies like the FTC have very broad rulemaking power. Perhaps motivated by the FTC's effort to expand its already broad authority, the Supreme Court granted certiori to hear two cases challenging the Chevron Doctrine. The upcoming decisions in Relentless Inc. v. Department of Commerce and Loper Bright Enterprises v. Raimondo could reverse the Chevron Doctrine. My prediction? Within the next two years, we will see major changes to the extent to which the FTC can continue promulgating rules and rendering internal decisions. I think the Supreme Court will sharply curtail the FTC's rulemaking and internal decision-making ability. This will be really interesting if the FTC chair remains Lena Kahn. She's at the helm of that agency, and she is a self-avowed regulatory radical who vigorously pushes for expanded FTC authority. There will probably be major clashes between that agency and the courts in the next few years. Uh -huh.